let's under understand about the concept of shear capital. Now, we all know that a company is an artificial person, meaning that unlike you and me, it's not a human being. It's something which is created by the law. Okay. Now, a company by itself, unlike us, cannot generate a share capital. Why? The reason is simple. I mean, you and I can work, we can earn money. Of course, you will be working at a later stage or maybe you are working somewhere even today. So what happens in company is that there is a set of people who are called the shareholders. And these shareholders can be as many in numbers as possible, of course, depending on the type of company you are. A company can be a private limited company, predominantly, or a public limited company. There are restrictions as to the number of members there, but assuming, let's say, there are shareholders. Each of these shareholders will put in some money into the company. So the money put in by the shareholders is called share capital. Now in private companies, basically the number of shareholders and the people who put in the money are called the shareholders or the equity holders. I'll come back to you on the type of shares which is there. Now in a private company, normally the number of shareholders is less. Whereas in a public company, it can run into thousands and millions of shares. When I say public company, what I mean is a public listed company. So one of the important aspects in accounting is how do you account for this money? Now let's say you have a public limited company where you have 1 million shareholders. Now it's practically impossible to open separate account for each shareholder, right? I mean, although if you have DMAT accounts and everything on an individual basis, you definitely can trace your accounts, but for the company, and we know that company is a separate artificial jurisdictional person. So what the company does is the company opens a share capital account and all the entries relating to the funds contributed by the shareholders, the money paid back to them or the returns given to them. We learn all these concepts as we move forward or repayment to them, all of them are basically taken into share capital account. There are detailed working of course, wherein you know, you know who is the individual who's put in the money and all. But for accounting purposes, you just have a share capital account. And then there are certain other nominal accounts which are used to record certain specific transactions. So this basically is the concept of share capital. Now there are various share type of share capital which you will see in the next set of videos where I will explain to you as to what all are the types of share capital.